Good morning to my fellow researchers. I am Mr. Lemur Giovianda, and this morning I will briefly discuss the quantitative research tools. In quantitative research data collection, the researchers usually gather the data through face-to-face -face by distributing the questionnaires personally direct to the targeted respondents of the study by online or by giving some link that will redirect you to a survey questionnaire form. The most famous is using Google Form. By mail or sending personal mail to targeted respondents of the study. And finally, by using phone interviews via mobile phone or telephone. Quantitative research methods involves the collection and analysis of objective data, and it is often used in numerical form. The research design is determined prior to the start of data collection, and it's not flexible. First things to do is we conduct pre-testing. All study instruments whether it's a quantitative or qualitative, should be pre-tested to check the validity and reliability of data collection tools. Pre-testing allows the research team to check whether the research instructions and questions are clear, context-specific, and adequate time has been allowed to administer the questionnaires. The second is sampling. Now that you have chosen the most appropriate techniques and tools to collect your research data, it is important for you to know how many people you need to approach to participate in your research. This is called the sample size. In general, when using quantitative research tools, you need to ensure that you recruit enough people to provide an accurate and reliable estimate of what you are studying. Next is data collection. Now that you have a sampling framework, you can start to think about collecting your data. Before collection begins, example for a survey, you must receive an ethical approval from the ethics review committee. In this process, you will have to develop an information sheet and informed consent form that will give to each study participant. And finally, the data interpretation. It is the appropriate research tools to be used in the study. The research process interventions and data collection tools, example, the questionnaires, are standardized to minimize or control possible bias. As you can see on the table, this provides you an overview of the quantitative data collection strategies. First is we have the descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics is the famous one that is used when you hear the word statistics. In this branch of statistics, the goal is to describe. Numerical measures are used to tell about features of set of data. There are a number of items that belong in this portion of statistics. These measures are important and useful because they allow researchers to see patterns among data and thus make sense of that data. Descriptive statistics can only be used to describe the population or data. 
set under study. The results cannot be generalized to any other group or population. Example of descriptive statistics are the mean, the median, the mode, percentage, frequency, and range. The second one is the inferential statistics. When you speak of inferential statistics, these are produced through complex mathematical calculations. It allows the researchers to intertrend about a larger population based on a study of a sample you take from it. Researchers use inferential statistics to examine relationship between variable within a sample size and make generalizations of predictions about how these variables will relate to a larger population. Techniques that researchers use to examine the relationship between variable and hereby create inferential statistics. This includes the linear regression analysis, ANOVA, correlation analysis, structural equation modeling. When conducting research using inferential statistics, researchers conduct a test of significance to determine whether they can uh, generalize their result to a larger population. Common tests of significance includes the chi-square and the t-test. There are four process of uh, how you uh, process data validation. First is to check for fraud. Interfere whether the, each respondent was actually interviewed or not. The next is screening. You make sure that the respondents were chosen as per research criteria. Then procedure, check whether the data collection procedure was duly followed. And finally, completeness to ensure that the interviewers ask the respondents as all the questions rather than just few required areas. I have here some research uh, conducted using quantitative uh, data analysis. I borrowed the researches from my friends in the graduate and postgraduate school. The first one is uh, a structural equation model on job performance among restaurants employees in Davao region. The research aimed to determine the best fit model of job performance among the restaurant employees in Davao region as influenced by employee engagement, entrepreneurial marketing, and empowerment of workers. To test the hypothesis, she used correlation method and to determine the best model that fits to job performance, she used the structural equation model. Another uh, research was about corporate social responsibility of inland resort owners and community attitude of barangay residents towards local tourism development. The research aimed to identify the domain of CSR that greatly influenced community attitude on the residents in Toril. To test the hypothesis, I use correlation method to identify relationship between the level of corporate social responsibility of the inland resort owners and the level of community attitudes and using the regression analysis to identify the domain of corporate social responsibility that influence community attitude. 
And last is all about attributes of hotel and restaurant management degree preferred by college student. Uh, a conjoint analysis. The research aim is to identify the best sets of attributes that students prefer for hotel and restaurant management degree uh, as a course in college. The researcher used a part worth or utility function estimation to identify the relative importance of the following attributes and by using conjoint analysis to define the best combination of attributes of an HRM degree as preferred by college students. The next one is uh, mixed methods research sample. According to Cresswell, the term mixed method refers to an emergent methodology of research that advances systematic integration or mixing quantitative and qualitative data within a single investigation or sustained program of inquiry. I present to you the two designs of mixed method research sequential and concurrent design. The first one is the exploratory sequential. This is characterized by collection of analysis of a quantitative data followed by a collection and analysis of a qualitative data. The purpose of this is to use qualitative results to assist in the training and interpreting the findings of a quantitative study. The second one is we have explanatory sequential design. Explanatory sequential is characterized by an initial phase of a qualitative data collection and analysis followed by a phase of a quantitative data collection and analysis. The purpose of this is to explore a phenomenon. This strategy may also be useful when developing and testing a new instrument. The third one, or another design, is what we call as concurrent design. Concurrent design are classified into three. We have concurrent triangulation, uh, which means there are two or more methods used to confirm, cross-validate, or collaborate, collaborate findings within a study. Data collection is concurrent. The second one is the date, uh, concurrent nested, a nested approach that gives priority to one of the methods and guides the project, while another is embedded or nested. And finally, the last is concurrent transformative. The use of theoretical perspective reflected in the purpose of research questions of the study to guide all methodological choices. I have here an example of a mixed method research using a convergent parallel approach. The researcher was Dr. Maria Joy Soriano with a title, Corporate Social Responsibility and Tourism Promotion Services as Determinants of Sustainability of beach resort, a convergent parallel approach. The purpose of this mixed method is to determine the corporate social responsibility and tourism promotion services as determinants of sustainability of beach resort. A convergent parallel approach research method design will use, uh, will be used. Uh, which converges quantitative and qualitative data in order to provide 
a comprehensive analysis of sustainability of beach resorts to examine whether the corporate social responsibility and tourism promotion services predicts sustainability of the beach resort operations. And I guess that's the end of my report.